Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video and this week, why contrarian investors are rare. Now, what is a contrarian investor? Well, if you've ever seen the Monty Python movie, The Life of Brian, one of my favorites, you might remember one scene and one quote from it. Brian tells the crowd, don't follow me, don't follow anybody, you're all individuals. And then a lone voice calls out, I'm not. So contrarians are people who are prepared to go against the crowd. In investing terms, what does that mean? It means, basically, you are capable, as Warren Buffett, the great US investor, might have put it, of being greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. In other words, you are somebody who can buy as others are selling and pick up a bargain, or sell when others are piling in and avoid the subsequent losses. Sounds simple, sounds like a great thing to do because it means you will be buying low and selling high, which is the point of investing in a way, but actually it's pretty difficult to do because it takes a certain person to be a contrarian and the question is, how do they know when is the right moment to go against the crowd? Okay, well, in a nutshell, let's assume you're looking for evidence the market's got ahead of itself on the upside. People are too confident, shares have risen too far too fast, and you're thinking, ah, Now's the time to get out. How would you know? Well, you could look for evidence of low cash holdings. When fund managers haven't got much cash on their books, it suggests they've piled into other things, like shares. You can look for complacency. I'm going to come back to this one. Just explore that in a bit more detail. What are the indicators that the market's got too confident, too bullish, too ahead of itself, too toppy? You can look for lots of activity. If people are confident in equity markets, lots of people pile in, everyone's in there, lots of shares being traded. And you can look for low short interest. That is saying not many people are out there betting against share prices, in other words, betting on falling share prices. And there are ways of getting this information. Now let's go back to complacency. What does a complacent market look like? It will make a contrarian think, I'm getting out before everyone else wakes up. Well, here are seven indicators. I covered them in more detail in other videos, so here's a snapshot. The fear gauge in Chicago. The Chicago Board Options Exchange VIX indicator has been low and stable for a long time. That can suggest complacency. Number two, the investor sentiment indicators, and there are several around, are all bullish. Everyone's confident, everyone's buying. Number three, stock prices are strong. In other words, you've got a high percentage of shares hitting 52-week highs as opposed to bashing through 52-week lows. Next, you've got bets on share prices rising in the derivatives market more than falling. That translates as high interest in call options versus put options. And there is a ratio you can look for that indicates where you are on that scale. Next, junk demand is high. People don't care. They're just gung-ho piling into anything they can get hold of with a high yield and that is showing up in demand for low quality bonds, possibly even equities too. And finally, safe haven demand is low. People are not interested in boring old treasuries and gilts, they want other things, sexier things. All of those things together can be read by a contrarian as irrational exuberance, a toppy market, time to sell. Now, you can reverse that. What about when you think, I wanna get in? Everyone's too pessimistic, too bearish. Now's the time to buy. A contrarian would look for high levels of cash holdings, Everyone's scared. They've bailed out of equities, gone back to cash. Widespread fear. Look at any of those complacency measures, flip them on their head, and there you go. Widespread fear. People are worried. Number three, weak volumes. When people are worried, they don't get into the equity market. They don't trade. They get out. And finally, high short interest. Okay? Lots of people, hedge funds, betting on prices falling and shorting shares. And there are ways you can get this information. Sounds good, so why aren't more people successful contrarians? Well, the problem is, you've probably worked out already that to be a contrarian, to make this work for you, you've got to be technically astute. You've got to understand what I've just said, basically. Brave enough to go in when other people are not, or sell when other people are not. Patient, because it may not pay off this strategy straight away. You may sell, then have to wait to be proved right. And liquid, you've got to be able to hold your position and wait for it to come good. Now, the question is, is that you? And for a lot of investors, if they're honest on at least one of those four measures, the answer is going to be probably not. So now what do you do? Well, if that's not you, don't waste time, effort and money trying to make that you. You may not have the time to put into looking at all these contrarian indicators. So instead, 
go for another strategy. Let someone else do the hard work, the stock picking, and try and commit to time in the market, not market timing. Something I cover in more detail in other videos. So there you have it. The ingredients of being a contrarian and why most people, in fact, actually aren't. Any questions to the usual place, editor at killick.com.